I'm doing this problem um, <clears throat> about it finding probabilities within a deck of UNO cards. So <clears throat> they define a, a, event E and they say event E is um, randomly selecting a UNO card that is red. So they ask us, what is the probability of event E? Well, we, used to, we have to use this basic probability rule that says that if all of the outcomes are equally likely, meaning here, if I draw a card from this deck, oh, by the way, and they, <clears throat> they're defining for this problem a UNO deck to be just the numbers between one and nine um, in all four colors, the red, yellow, green and blue. So that would mean that there's total of, um, there's nine cards of each of the four colors. So nine times four is 36. So there's 36 different cards in this um, problem. A regular Uno deck would have other cards like draw two cards and wild cards and stuff, but we're throwing all those out and we're just gonna use these in this problem. So, um, <clears throat> The way we're going to find the probability, and the first thing they want us to do is find the probability that um, you will pick a red card. So at random, you pick a card from the deck, what's the probability that it is red? To figure that out, we have to use this basic probability rule. And what this, it is, is it says, if all of the um, <clears throat> outcomes are equally likely, so in other words, if I if there is a deck of cards and these are the cards in the deck and they're all turned over face down and we you know move them all around and mix them all up really well, then, and I ask you to choose one at random, is each card equally likely to be chosen? So are you just as likely to pick a green of eight, green eight you know, here as a red one. Um, well, there's only one red one in this whole deck and there's only one green eight in this whole deck. So yes, you're equally likely to choose um, a green eight as you are a red one, you know, unless if they're really well mixed up cards and if it's a fair deck and everything, mean that like they don't have two red ones in there or something like that, which they don't, this is the deck they're playing with. So um, yes. When you are drawing a card at random, if they're truly you know, mixed up, then each card here, every card in our deck, each of these cards at least, is equally likely to be chosen. So we can go ahead and we can use this rule. And um, it says we can compute the probability of an event E by the given formula. The probability of event E, and they just happen to be using the same variable we are using for our particular problem, um, is the number of ways that E can occur over the total number of possible things that could happen when you draw a card. So when we're talking about how can E occur? Well, there is one, two, three, because we're gonna be happy. I mean, we want just a red card. We're gonna be happy if we have any of these red cards. So I'm gonna be happy if I have a red one, that will satisfy event E. We're gonna be happy if we have a red two, a red three, a red four, a red five, a red six, a red seven, a red eight, and a red nine. So there are nine ways that event E could happen. So um, I would say <clears throat> that the numerator there in this equation is nine. Oh, I'm gonna draw this on here. Out of the total number of things that could happen. Well, if all these cards are turned over and you mix them up and you randomly choose one, each one of these cards is a possible one that you could choose. So there are total, like I said, and there's four groups, four different colors, and they are all, and we have one through nine of each of the four different colors. So that makes four times nine, times nine, which makes a total of 36 cards here. So there are 36 
possible different cards you could have gotten, but the ones that would make us happy um, would be getting a red one. So that's why there, um, the probability here of getting a red one is nine out of 36. Now, sometimes they want, they want you to reduce that. So you can reduce that to one fourth by dividing the top and bottom by, if you see a number that divides into the numerator and denominator, then you can divide that and it becomes one fourth. Okay, so um, the, I, for this problem, I think they'll take nine, nine thirty six. Nine thirty six is sometimes they'll they want you to reduce it, sometimes they don't. Anyway, so that's the answer to the, this first part is, um, <clears throat> and that is the probability that event E will happen. Okay, then event F is the pro is randomly um, choosing a UNO card that is some number between one and eight of any of the four colors. So um, <clears throat> we can use the same equation as before. We just have to figure out what is the, the number, how many different ways. And so in this situation, we're gonna be happy if we get any number between one and eight. So um, how many different ways could I get a number between one and eight? Well, it's all of these. If I got any of those numbers in any four of the colors, then that would make me happy for event F. Would event F would have occurred. So um, <clears throat> how many cards are in there? Well, there are one through eight of all of the different four colors. So that's gonna be eight times four, 32. So there's 32 different ways that F can happen. And F is, you know, choosing a, a card between one and, and an eight. And the, over the total number of cards, the number of possible cards you could have chosen, which is 36, it's, it's still 36 cards in the deck. All right. Now, how many cards are in the intersection of events E and F? So intersection means when you have a Venn diagram, it, it, the overlapping area in a Venn diagram. So let's, let's look at that. <clears throat> if in this circle on the left, Everything in that circle are the, all the red parts. Only red parts go in this or in that circle. So that it describes all of the outcomes of event E. And then in this circle on the right are all the cards between the all colors between one and eight. So, um, you know, from yellow cards between one and eight, the green cards between yellow and the red cards between one and eight and the blue cards between one and eight are all in that circle. And then there's actually some cards that were not in our Venn diagram. They're on the outside of these circles and those are the nines, right? And there's also the nine, the red nine that, that is, it, 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 <clears throat> it's here too. And, but the other color nines are completely left out of the circles because they are neither red cards nor one through eight. But what is in the intersection, meaning where are where the circles overlap? Um, that means that in this intersection, you would have to be a red card and also a card one through eight. And so you can see the the cards that satisfy both of those are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, the cards one through eight of the red cards. Those are the cards that are both red cards and cards that are one through eight. So they're both E, and, and it, they're both event E being a red card, and they're both event F being a card one through eight. <clears throat> so they asked, what is the probability that of picking a red card and a card that's one through five, one through eight? So you just have to count the, the number the number of cards that have both of those qualities. So it's there, how many are in this intersection? Oh, and we have to answer how many are in the intersection? It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's all of the red eight cards. So there's eight cards in the intersection. Then they ask, what is the probability of 
E and F happening. So what is the probability of you picking a card that is both red and one through eight? Well, we just said there are eight cards that are like that. So we're using this formula up here again, the number of ways that it can happen over the total number of outcomes. So we're gonna put the number of ways that E and F can happen was eight over the total number of events that are 36. So that's our probability and we could probably reduce that, but um, we would find a number that divides into eight. And so it would be like four. Yeah, four. I might be able to go again. Um, oh, no, okay, um, two and um, <clears throat> 18? No, 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 not 18, nine, two nine. Okay, so yeah, that reduced, so you can reduce that as well. But I'm not sure if they're running white. I don't think in this problem they need to reduce. All right, then they say, let event G be um, E or F. Use the general addition rule to compute this. So the event G is you're either you're either an event E. That means you're what, what's the probability of you being and that's what they're asking for here is what is the probability of G? And G is your E or F, which means you're either a red card or you're one through eight. <clears throat> so to figure that out, you need to count the ones that are red cards and the ones that are um, one through eight. So you would you could see um, with this one, you're going to be counting everything that's inside the circles. It's being careful not to count the ones in the middle twice, because some people will count everything in, in the red card circle, and then they'll count everything in the in the um, one through eight circle. And then they're going to count the inner, these inner circle, these inner cards twice, but we don't want to do that. So we just count everything inside. So um, the circle. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let me see if I can get a pointer. I can see my pointer a little better. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's all the red cards. And um, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33. So there's actually 33 cards that are both, um, that are either red or one through eight. So there's 30, I think, I think we just said 33 over thir the total number of outcomes, 36. So there's 33 ways that you could be happy. You could either get a red card or a, um, <clears throat> a one through eight card. And another way of doing that problem is by using this formula And what this formula is, what you could, I mean, and what it says P of E, which means the probability of E happening, which we already calculated the probability of E. So um, we could go back up to probability of E, remember that that was one fourth, which we'll say nine over 36. So I think everybody, everything's gonna have a denominator of 36. So nine over 36. That's the probability of E happening. The probability of F happening, we did calculate that as well already. That's 32 out of 36. And they're saying subtract the probability that E and F occur. And we calculated that as well in previous, and that was the two nights or eight 36s. And so we would just follow order of operations. We'd add those together first. We would get nine plus 32 is 41. And then minus the eight out of 36 is 33 out of 36. 
So that is also the way that you could do that problem, um, <clears throat> right? So I got the answer by just by counting the cards in all the circles, or um, I got the answer by following this formula. See, you have to subtract that P of E and F just because um, you don't wanna count these cards in the intersection twice. And when you add just the probability of E, you're continuing, you're going to be adding, you're going to be considering these cards and you're calculate the probability of F, you're considering, you're adding these cards in again. That's why they have to subtract off that intersection with that formula. And notice that if, um, if events E and F were mutually exclusive, they would have no intersection here. And that's why when, when two events are mutually exclusive, we don't have to worry about subtracting off the intersection, probability of the intersection. We can just find the probability of E and probability of F because there is no intersection to worry about. So that, that makes sense, that makes sense. Okay, then they ask how, lastly, how many cards are in event G? Well, event G is just what we, we um, calculated here, so it's the numerator here. So it's 33, there's 33 um, cards. And we re we counted that too, I said, we counted that. We counted all, because all the cards in E or F, so it's just everything in the circles and not counting the middle twice. But yep, that's how we did it. All right, let me know if you have questions. Bye.